We're back with another episode of Wild Kitchen presented by Moultrie Mobile. In this video, we're focused on summer grilling and we're gonna be making grilled venison kebabs served with a delicious chimichurri sauce. The first step in this recipe is to create the marinade. We'll combine two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, three tablespoons of olive oil, and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce in a medium-sized bowl. We'll set that aside as we get out our venison backstrap. For this recipe, we'll need a backstrap that's about one to one and a half pounds. Using a sharp knife, I'm going to cut this into one to one and a half inch size chunks. Here's a good example of what it should look like. Once we've cut the venison into chunks, we'll pat it dry using paper towels and season both sides with salt and black pepper. Then we'll take our cut up venison and place it into the bowl with the marinade. We'll use a spoon to stir it until it's well combined. Then we'll place a lid over top of the bowl and set it in the fridge. Now we're ready to make our chimichurri sauce. You'll need a blender or a food processor. We'll add in a third cup of fresh basil, a third cup of fresh cilantro, a third cup of fresh parsley, one tablespoon of red wine vinegar, a half of a lemon that's been juiced, a teaspoon of minced garlic. Then we'll dice up a shallot and add that to our blender. Then we'll add in a half teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes and two tablespoons of olive oil. While it's blending, we're going to add a fourth cup of olive oil, so I like to get that ready before I get started. Once you've got your olive oil ready, you can start your blender and as the motor is running, add that fourth cup of olive oil. You'll see it starts to become smooth. Once it's fully blended, we can set it aside into a bowl. At this point, you can taste the chimichurri and add any salt and pepper if desired. Then we'll cover it with a lid and set it aside in the fridge. Now we're ready to prep our vegetables for the kebabs. First, I'll get out a red bell pepper and cut it into one half inch to one inch pieces. They don't have to be perfect, but definitely want them smaller or the same size as the venison. We'll repeat this process with a green bell pepper. Then we'll get out a red onion, cut it in half, and then cut that half into one inch chunks. Now we're ready to start threading our kebabs. You'll need metal skewers, but if you're using wooden skewers, be sure to soak them before you start threading. We'll alternate threading the vegetables and the venison backstrap as we thread them to the kebabs. I like to do red onion, a bell pepper, the steak, another bell pepper, red onion, and then the steak, and repeat that process until the kebab is full. We'll repeat this process until we run out of venison backstrap. Typically, this recipe makes about six kebabs. Once you're finished threading, you should look like this, and we're ready to head outside. I've already preheated my grill to medium-high heat. If you're using a pellet grill or just looking for an extra char, I recommend spraying your grill gates with cooking spray. Once the grill is preheated, we'll place the kebabs directly onto the grill gates. Then we'll close the lid and let them cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. During this time period, you're gonna want to rotate the kebabs every few minutes so that they cook evenly. Once they're close to being done, I like to use an internal meat thermometer to make sure the temperature has reached 145 degrees. This will give you a perfectly medium rare kebab. Once they've reached that perfect 145 degree temperature, we'll remove them from the grill onto a plate. Then we'll bring them inside and let them rest for a few minutes. Then after they've rest, all that's left to do is to spoon that delicious chimichurri sauce over top of the kebabs and you're ready to serve. If you like this recipe, be sure to follow Moultrie Mobile on YouTube for more wild game recipes. 